All right, I'm here to show you guys a sport you've probably oh never heard of. Oh it is uh, mountain unicycling. Mountain unicycling. I had no idea it's a sport, but there's a lot of science involved in that. So uh, we have a professor, Dr. Roland Kay, is gonna fill us in on how that works. Whoa, basics of unicycling are you need to be moving to stay over your balance point. Because if you stop, if you stop unicycling, it's really hard to stay on your uni. But as long as you're moving, you can keep your balance over that center point, keeping the inertia with you moving forward. And you don't always have to be moving forward. You can also unicycle backwards like this. And in fact, you can also unicycle a half step backwards, a half step forward, which is called an idle. So with a unicycle, you've got to keep your center mass right over the top of the center point of the unicycle, or sometimes you can be leaning slightly forward and ride underneath it. But today, what I want to talk about in more detail is why there are so many different sizes of unicycles, whether you've got this little 20-inch unicycle or this big 36-inch unicycle, and what impact this has on your speed. And it all boils down to the total gear ratio. So cyclists with their 10 speeds and 20 speeds uh, are familiar with gearing. And they might be surprised that gearing is important in unicycling as well, even when you're talking about a fixed wheel with no gear. And the difference here is that the gearing comes in the wheel size. I'm getting these unicycles lined up all on the line. This will kind of be like one axis of a graph. And then how far they go along this side will be the other axis of the graph. So we can see for each of these different sizes from this smallest one up to a geared 26, how far uh, one revolution is in terms of uh, how far they'll move. A 15 inch unicycle. Next is a 20 inch trials unicycle. 24 inch, 26 inch, 36 inch unicycle. Do this 26 inch again, but it's gonna be geared up. This is effectively a 42 inch unicycle uh, if it was ungeared. So what you can see is with the larger unicycle wheels, you go a lot further with one pedal, which is effectively a very, a much higher gear ratio. You can go a lot faster, but it's also a lot harder to push yourself up those steep hills. I'm gonna ride down this hill as fast as I can in each of these different unicycles, and we'll see what my top speed is. On this 20 inch unicycle, my top speed was 9.3 miles an hour. That's pretty slow. 24 inch unicycle, 12 miles an hour. On the big wheel, 36er, it's going 17 miles an hour. 20 miles an hour, that's a little scary. 20 miles an hour in a unicycle, that's faster than you can run if you fall. So. You're a little bit scared, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's, it's a total thrill. So that is the basic science of the total gear ratio. Essentially, it is the size of your crank versus the size of the wheel that determines your speed and it determines the effort involved. Let me just tell you, you'll get super fit doing this sport. I mean, if you want to get in shape, go out and ride up and down the hills in your local uh, mountain bike park for an hour. And on a unicycle, you will be completely exhausted. It is one of the best workouts and it works out not only your legs and obviously your lungs, but it's a great core workout. So it really strengthens your lower back and your abs and keeps the, the core of your body in really good shape. If you want to learn how to ride a unicycle, click here. Roland totally motivated me to make this video. It's a video talking about how to do unicycling, and I'm gonna give it a try. So I just got this new Nimbus unicycle from unicycle.com and I'm gonna fill you in on everything you need to know about learning this awesome sport. Also, if you want some more motivation, then I hooked up with Chris Holmes, who does some awesome unicycling to make this short inspirational video. Check him out, remember, subscribe. We'll be back for some more unicycling videos. I am, thank you. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Yoo-hoo!